So it feels like any talk of correction on Bitcoin is now over. We are again heading to attack that all-time high. And this time we are attacking the all-time high with huge, huge, huge momentum. Now, the reality is that as soon as that all-time high is breached, and it could happen as soon as today, it's like the gun goes off for altcoins and the race begins. What I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you some data today, which shows us exactly when the big altcoin run is going to start, how long it's going to last, and how long the entire bull market's going to last. Let me tell you guys, it's not long. So it doesn't, it means we really, really, really have no time and we should probably get on with the show. So let's go. When I saw the data for the show today, when the researchers presented me with the data for the show today, basically I had one thing on my mind and that is that if you're not in right now, you're in big trouble. If you don't get into the market pretty soon, you're going to miss this bull run and you're going to catch the 2028 bull run, by which time we won't be here to help you because we'll be retired from trading meme coins. That's why we won't be here anymore. I mean, I know you're laughing at me about trading meme coins. I want to just tell you that two people from the office today made a million dollars each on one meme coin. Now, for me running a business, I don't know how I'm going to keep those people coming to work when I can pay them whatever, a couple of grand a month for coming to work, and they made a million dollars on meme coins. It's absolutely impossible. But we have to appreciate that that's the market that we're in. It's the biggest wealth transfer in history, and we're lucky enough to be here and to be here early to participate in the wealth, the biggest wealth transfer in history. Now, you can see that one of those people that's not working very well is the person that does the pricing on the top of the screen because the, the pricing keeps slashing. He also made a lot of money in meme coins, and therefore he's not updating the prices as often as he used to. Anyway, let's go on to a very serious note. We've got a lot to talk about today. Um, lots to talk about today. Specifically, I want to show you some data about when the altcoin run is going to begin. Um, everything has, has changed, and the altcoin run is going to begin very soon. I'm going to show you exactly when the altcoin run is going to begin. I'm going to show you how long it's going to last, and I'm going to show you exactly how long we have until the end of this bull market. And let me tell you, it's not very long. So if you're not already in, you probably should be getting all in. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, yesterday, I said to you, if you like this content, then smash the like button. The problem is that you waited too long to smash a like button and you basically destroyed the algorithm on YouTube. So now I'm going to ask you the other way around. Just assume that you're going to like the, the content. Smash the like button now so we can get on with the show and we can tell everybody that we're actually here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to beat yesterday's record. Yesterday, we had like eight and a half thousand people join us on the show. Your job, not my job, your job is to make sure today we get 10,000 people. You see what I would say about the guy who was updating the prices? There we go. Can we just have the prices updated? I know you made a million dollars on a meme coin today. Yeah. <laughs> you won't believe the crap that people are trading in this office, okay? This is the new coin that these guys are trading in the office today. They were trading another coin. Um, the new one that they're trading is Savage. Savage is Mike Tyson, okay? It's, it's based on this crazy Twitter account. I did tweet about it earlier. These guys, I mean, I, we, I cannot believe that we are here and we are talking about Savage, Mike Tyson's coin. But when he beats Jake Paul, see, I mean, they, they're talking about Savage, Savage. Um, uh, the, yeah, that's Savage. <laughs> Nibble, oh my God. Yeah, no, this is, this is the, the account. Anyway, let's, let's get into, let's talk about, let's stop talking about meme coins because more people will resign from their jobs and let's start talking about the bitcoin price and where we're at in the bitcoin cycle remember if you haven't smashed the like button destroy the like button your job is to get people here we have another beautifully 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 green day very hard to talk about which narratives are actually running today because it just feels like everything is up I'm going to show you, though, a couple of narratives that we should be in and maybe one or two that we should slow down on, even though we spoke about them yesterday. When it comes to the Bitcoin uh, uh, correction or, or the talk of the correction, what we can see is that that correction was the perfect breakout, breakout retest, and it's following textbook chart uh, uh, textbook charting and now it's starting to go up and it's starting to go up um, with a little bit of momentum or with a, a whole lot more momentum than we had before. As Crypto Jelly says, it says you break the resistance level, you retest it uncomfortably deep, you bounce and then you take off and you actually make new highs. We were helped a little bit yesterday by the ETFs. We finally got a green ETF day. 
not a big green ETF day, but we got 15 million net inflows. And that was just because Fidelity gave us at the death, at the, at the close, gave us $262 million. It just felt a little bit better than having five days of consecutive net outflows, even though $15 million is, is nothing when it comes to ETFs. And GBTC is still bleeding, it's, uh, uh, bleeding out. We want GBTC to continue to bleed out. And then we want to get this ETF um, narrative out of our head or, and, and actually start accumulating back in the ETF narrative. So that is when it comes to Bitcoin. Now, as I said to you, it feels like the talk of the correction is now completely finished. Um, as Peter Brand says, you want to put it into perspective. This is where we are. We had a high of 73,836. We then hit a low of 60,771. And now we are going back to touch that 73,000 uh, all-time high that, we, that we're actually at. As I said earlier, when we get that all-time high, that's when the altcoin race actually begins. I'm going to show you the data that actually backs that. But I want to put it for you into perspective, um, comparing it to other bull markets. So let me make it a little bit bigger. So this is a, a perspective around other bull markets. Now, what you can see is that in the beginning of the bull market, the dips and the recoveries are much slower. 39 weeks, 30 weeks, 26 weeks, eight weeks, six weeks, two weeks. And you can see that the same pattern happened in the 2018 to 2021 bull run. We start off with longer corrections, then we go to five week corrections and four weeks corrections, and then we went into the bear market. Now, you can see that now the corrections are actually starting to get very close. The, it's, like, it's like when you're having a baby and the contractions are happening like very, very, like very closely together. That means the baby is about to come. This is exactly the top of the bull market is about to come. The contractions are coming very, 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 very close together. Okay, so this is where we're at. We're getting to a point in, in, the, in the bull market where the dips and corrections are starting to become a lot quicker. What does that mean? It means that when you look on the chart you're getting to this part of the bull market over here. And that's what, what my data is going to show you in a couple of minutes. It's going to show you that the data is here where things happen much quicker. You see, here you have time. Here you can go down, you can chill at the bottom, you can have a couple of drinks, lots of drinks. If you, and then by the time you get back here, it's like you've almost given up. Yeah, there's no time anymore. And this is the part of the bull market that we're actually at. That's what the data is actually starting to show us. You can see that. So that's what the data is starting to show us. The number of days until we reach that all-time high, and we, we're attacking that all-time high, this time with a little bit of momentum, is actually getting much shorter. We started to map it out here. Like when this green line over here touches that, that green line over there, when the green candles touch the green line, you can see the number of days is becoming very, 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 very short. And that shows us that we're in the next part of the bull market. So what happened in this, in this little correction? Because we had a correction. Um, it wasn't a very scary correction. It wasn't a very respectable correction. It was just a correction. It was like very plain. No one got scared. No one, no one even like thought about the correction. All of us were just going, just, we want to buy. We want to buy. When can we start buying? It wasn't a very scary correction. What happened was though, $4 billion of um, leverage um, sits between the price of Bitcoin and the all-time high. Now in the, the, the down, the short leverage got destroyed. Now in the up, the long leverage will get destroyed. That's, that's what's about to happen. What happened when the, the market went down? Some smart whales used the one day where we had a bit of like shock, where we went down to 60,000 to actually buy. It was the biggest accumulation day, the single, single biggest accumulation day in, 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 in years. 51,951 Bitcoin were accumulated by wallets that were held by, you can call them wells, 10 Bitcoin to 10,000 Bitcoin. On Sunday, translated to 0.263 of the supply. So, Smart people saw this coming. They bought in the very quick correction that we had. And now we move on. Now, bear in mind that on Friday, we have a $9 billion options expiration. It's the biggest options expiration ever. Also, it is the biggest options expiration that we've had since the ETF launch. Now, remember that the majority of these ETFs are being traded by institutions on behalf of their clients. They want to look like geniuses, right? What do you do if you want to look like geniuses? You see the guy that, that, that does the pricing of the Bitcoin and Solana. He made too much money on meme coins and he keeps dropping the price because he, he doesn't need to work anymore. So as I was saying, as I was saying, it's a big problem. I know everyone's laughing, but everyone here is making so much money. Everyone in the office is making so much money. It's hard to get people to come to work anymore. Like anyone seen Fred lately? 
Fred just Fred just trades meme coins all day long. I haven't seen him doing any banter work. He just trades me all day long, just trading meme coins. Trading me. His Twitter accounts become like the the filthiest, most degen um, uh, uh, degen account. Anyway, going back to it. So. We have the options expiration on Friday. It's the biggest options expiration we've ever had on Bitcoin. It's the first options expiration that we've had since the ETFs have launched and the institutions are starting to play the institutional game on Bitcoin. Now, this is a bullish options expiration. We, it feels like we could get the options expiration, we could get some momentum into the options expiration, pushing the price even further up, okay? Now, you can see that right now, the Interest in Bitcoin by the institutions is at an all-time high. I'm looking at the CME data. CME data shows that the CME open interest on the futures is just under the all-time high. On options, it is by far, by far, by far, by far at an all-time high. You can see that, that, that data over there. So it feels like there's a lot of momentum in the market. We're getting this options expiration close. It's the first also quarterly close on, on Bitcoin since the uh, institutions have actually entered the game. So just think about it like this. You're an institution, you started to accumulate Bitcoin, you wanna look amazingly, amazingly, amazingly good in the first quarter when you do your first quarter reporting um, around this new asset class that you're invested in. Now we have that options expiration happening. We've had the first quarter on Bitcoin, 68.08% up. I mean, as a, as a TradFi, as a TradFi degen, you look like a god. You look like you're the best financial manager in the world. You've put your clients into an asset where in the first quarter of your investment, you've done 68.08% return if you've bought the ETF. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how that feels for a finance guy? That's the best advertisement for a finance guy ever. And I read this. As I said to you, we are going up now, and it seems like we're going up with huge momentum. So unlike where we were in a year ago, or it was two years ago, Bitcoin is the exact opposite place where it was at 67, 000, three years ago, 67K in 2021. FTX was short the market, flooding it with paper. Interest rates were set to rise. We were, at, we were uh, years away from the halving. The ETFs are just a dream. And this is now the complete reverse of where we're at. It's a, it, it's a perfect setup. Time to keep stacking. And we're starting to get momentum. You can see that even though the Dixie is at 104, which is very high, gold's not moving. Equities are starting to move down. Yields are starting to go up, okay? Bitcoin is actually ripping. Bitcoin actually has huge momentum. Michael Saylor, mi micro strategy up 22%. One, let's just, I just want to get a, a live price because I mean, I'm holding some micro strategy in my portfolio, not as much as I used to hold because I did think, oh, um, I did think, so 1849 on MicroStrategy, very, very, very um, big momentum here. As this tweet says, it would be crazy to be bearish 30 days before the halving, okay? It would just be, it would just be a bad, bad, bad strategy, especially when based on the success of the US ETF, the London Stock Exchange is now saying that they want to do an ETF on the 28th of May this year. Now, that, I mean, I don't think it's going to be as big as the US one, but still nice to know that other markets are starting to introduce ETFs. Also, you're getting gold miners. Get this. Gold miners in South, I think it's in South America. It is a, a gold miner. They have a, letters of intent to acquire 24,800 Bitcoin. If that's not a sign to the market to say, hey, we used to mine this thing called gold. We actually think it's probably smarter to actually buy Bitcoin and maybe even mine Bitcoin. And then I don't know what else you want in terms of momentum. Also, I agree with Suzu when he says the next wave of leverage formation in crypto will come from private banks competing on loan-to-value ratios on Bitcoin ETFs. So what he says there is he says, look, right now, everybody's buying Bitcoin ETFs. Private banks want to give you loans, right? They will start competing on who can give you the biggest leverage against your Bitcoin ETF. So if you hold $100 in a Bitcoin ETF, your bank will give you 50% loan to value. Then another bank will say, no, 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 we'll give you 60% loan to value. And that could cause the next wave of leverage. It feels like it's getting much more bullish. It feels like, like this whole market is absolutely about to explode. Elio says, he says, he's got a, I've gotten much more bullish uh, uh, now. Second half of this year will be historic. And I think I agree with him. Alex Becker, he says, the markets will probably give off, uh, will probably... The market's probably going higher than we think it will. In 2021, dreaming too big naffed us. In 2024, 
dreaming too small will knife us. To be honest, I want to just quickly walk you through a discussion that I was having earlier in the office today. One of my guys came to me, one of my favorite guys in the office. He said to me, bro, I actually cannot understand, I cannot get my head around what is going on here. And he comes from like normal industry. He was an event manager, event planner before this. And he said to me, I just cannot begin to, to understand what is actually happening in this crypto bull market. He says people are making a million dollars on meme coins. People are, are making millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of returns so quickly. And I think we need to take a couple of like minutes, seconds, whatever you want to spend to just honestly just appreciate how we as a community are so beautifully positioned for the biggest wealth transfer in history, how we are reaping the rewards of the biggest wealth transfer in history. You need to understand that this, what we're living through, people making millions of dollars on meme coins daily, people being able to take a portfolio from $50,000 to $4.9 million in less than three months is absolutely, absolutely unheard of in any kind of market ever. And I don't know if we'll ever get this wealth transfer again. And I think you need to be fully cognizant. You, first of all, you need to appreciate where we're at. That's the first thing. You need to be fully, fully, fully cognizant of this beautiful opportunity that we have being in the center of things. Even, even the guy driving the, 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 the prices above me here, he, he also needs to be fully cognizant of the opportunity that he has. And he should just leave the prices up there. But I also don't want us to you know, lose sight um, of, of reality here. And become, what's the opposite of humble, arrogant, and forget where we came from and, and how much we appreciate where we're at. And so to that end, I, I think I want to bring uh, someone onto the show. We will get, we will get onto the altcoins in a second, but I want to bring my brother Sheldino Tentino back onto the show. You know that, you know, this man has changed probably more lives than anyone that I've, that in the entire crypto game. I think Sheldino is Sheldino is not driven by money. Sheldino is driven by the ability to, to change lives. Right, Sheldino? Yeah, brother. We sat this morning and we both like, I don't know, it feels weird making the cash, but we're missing something. Like, I don't know. It's just that, that purpose behind what we're doing. And, you know, just I just want to make sure that everyone in this bull market, like I feel incredibly blessed. I know you do too. It's really rewarded and been incredible, but I just feel we need to try help as many across this journey too. like uh, make as much impact as we can. Um, and just remember why we're here. I think at times we focus on money, but uh, the community we've built and what we're trying to create here is a bit different. We're trying to be there for each other. We're so Sheldon, I want you to, I want you, I want to play something and I want you to tell me what, what the story is behind this, if you don't mind. So you, I found this video today at the office. Two days ago on the show, I had a plan of taking a trade. I got something incredible that I want to do with the trade. And we've done incredibly good here. I took a Solana position. I put in $6,000. It's $45,000 in profits. Then what I did is I took an AVAX trade. And this is $3,000 that I put in. And I'm $59,000 up. I'm about to go live now. I'm about to bank all the profits because I'm about to do something incredible. I think it's gonna be a little bit crazy, but I think it's gonna be amazing. My Solana is closed. My AVAX is closed. Done. Once I closed the trades on the show, I then raced home, started searching for cars. It took me about an hour. I found the two perfect cars and I went through to the dealerships. I then ended up buying both cars that day, got them the next morning and I got to give them. Yo, bro, I can't hear you. <laughs> so I'm saying that, 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 that's your God, that's your God, those are your godparents, right? 
That's your uncle. Yeah, brother. So those were the ones that I stayed at when I got to meet you. And, you know, they've been struggling for a very long time with cars for, I think, five years. They're braking all the time. They drive every day. They, they've they just, the other day, there was five of them sitting in a two-seater truck, or Bucky is what we call it. And that's how they were getting around every single day. So when I saw the trades, I kept giving a lot of money back to the market just by holding trades for too long. I had no purpose behind them. Um, and I got a voice note from him a couple of days before this. And he was just... Uh, I could hear the sadness in his voice. I can't make it to work today. My cars are stuck, these sort of things. And I looked at trades. I'm like, I, I have to start getting back to what it was for. So bank the profits, two cars paid in cash, full motor plan. They're not going to have a single bit of problem for the next, uh, you know, so how long, five years. I, I want to ask you a question. How long did it take you to make that money? Um, a week, two weeks? No, it was four days because I took it live on the okay. show with, with everyone. And then so you messed, around, then. you messed around for four days and with the profits of what you messed around with, yeah. you managed well, to change. I took the trades for the car. So finally, I was like, I need to do this for a reason. And I put a specific amount of money for these cars. Well, not these specific cars, but the price range of what I wanted. And, uh, and it played out in a couple of days and it's done. They're the happiest people ever. Bro. Change, change their lives. Like, change are, their lives. You change their lives. This is what it's about, Ron. This is what we started, right? This is what it's always been about was to show the power of what you can create and how you can help and how together we can do the stuff that that's what it's about so that's why we started banter the idea behind for us behind starting banter was to change as many people's lives as possible we knew that we couldn't change people's lives by we're not doctors we can't operate on people and so we decided to change people's lives by actually te making them financially free and the reason is we know that if you're fine if you're not financially free you're living to eat and you're living to sleep and that's pretty much the same as being in prison. And it's the worst place in the world. And so we, we, we started Banter to change people's lives and we've changed millions and millions and millions of people's lives, but we, we actually wanna take it a step further. So what we know is that there's a lot of people in the world and in the community that need help. Um, and they just won't ask for help. And so Sheldon and I are starting an initiative and the initiative is very simple. You tell us someone that needs their life changed or just needs a little bit of help. All you need to fill in is your email, your, the name and surname of the person that, that uh, needs some help. Which country do they live in? Why do you think they need help? What's wrong? Just give us as much detail as possible. How do you suggest we help them? Buy them a new wheelchair, buy them a new, whatever. What is it? Is there an urgency? Yeah, guys, do they need people that really need it. Like someone that just needs that real break and real push, please. This is what we're looking for. Yeah. I mean, is there, is there an urgency to help them? If there is, tell us why it's urgent. Do they need a transplant? Do they, you know, like, is there an operation? How much do you estimate it will cost us to help them? Is it a thousand, two thousand, three thousand? If you can send us some photos of like what you want us to do, give us your name or somehow and some way we can contact you. Okay. Um, contact you. And please just, you know, make sure that like we, we, we're going to have to go through each one of these. So please just don't, don't ask for money for yourself. Let's really change people's lives. Sheldon and I are committed to taking our profits from trading, not all our profits, but lots of our profits and to helping uh, so, people. So Ron, yeah, like, I think we're fine. We were at that point where we got the market at a good place, but I'm willing to put my trading accounts on the line. I'm willing and to put whatever I can for the rest of the bull to, um, to help whoever we can. And I just want to show you a quick example over here quickly. Um, if I can share screen, just see if see. you can share screen, you know, just tell me, just tell me, can there you we go. See it? yeah, okay. uh, I see, uh, I see a trading account. This account over here, you can see it. Yeah. So this current one over here is $80,000 in profits. Um, so I'm already loaded. Like I'm already, I've been taking these, been waiting for, for, for what we can do. Um, and, uh, so we're ready to go here too, bro. So I'm, I'm ready to help as much as we can. And I'm going to put as much time as I can. I just want you all to benefit. And I just want everyone to, mm -hmm. to use this crazy market as an opportunity. Yeah. So here we go, guys, there's a link over here, as you can see, Ryan and, Ch Ryan and Sheldon changing lives. We're going to add Kyle to that as well tomorrow. But, um, if you know someone that might need a little bit of a help in life, we want to help them. We'll do it live on the show. We'll call them. We're really looking for people who want, like, who are, you know, like, we really want to change people's lives. So please don't mess around and just, like, not, don't, don't, don't do it about yourself. This is an initiative made to go back to Banter's roots, Sheldon's roots, yeah. Ryan's roots, and really, really, really to, to change lives like Sheldon has been changing so many lives. So, guys, there's a link below. Do it. Sheldon, you know, I know you have to go to the golf course. Thanks, I know your brother. tee off is 20 yeah, minutes from now. now. I think last thing from me, guys, it was crazy for me and Ryan to realize this morning that. We have built something incredible and Ron's done something incredible and the money's been amazing, but uh, we've been missing that uh, that last uh, little bit. And I think it's the, the satisfaction of just becoming a community again. And this is why we're here, guys. We had to change lives. Once you learn the lesson, please teach others. Please help as many as you can and just keep sharing the love.
I love you all. Love you, Ryan. Love you, brother. See you later. See you. Enjoy. Good luck on the course, bro. Thank you. All right. Let's go back to... So that's that's that. If we really want, we do want to keep changing lives, so just, you know, do that. There's a link below. Just let... We'll keep... The link will be there every single day. You don't need to do it today, but let's let really change people's lives. And we'll bring it here. We'll bring it to you guys because our, we started Banter to change lives. We want to carry on changing people's lives. Um, all right. So yeah, speaking of changing lives um yesterday we said that we made a new portfolio for you guys um you probably saw it yesterday and i said to you guys we are under a lot of pressure with a new portfolio why because the previous portfolio made 3000 uh, 370 percent returns that's that's a big number and we needed to make sure that we at least beat our current portfolio so we made this portfolio for you guys over here uh, i did make two changes to the portfolio now if you were in front runners you would have seen the portfolio front runners is our discord group it's where we all live. It's where they get the alpha. They get the spreadsheets first. They get the alpha first. As I said to you guys yesterday, it's a closed group, unfortunately. But on the 1st of April, we are letting people in. Um, if you want to sign up, there's 99 spots left. Okay, so there's 99 spots left in the waiting list. Sign up there and you'll get in. I made two changes to our portfolio from yesterday. The first thing is I put some money into Coty because I just think that not putting money into Coty would be a dumb move, especially when they pivoted to become an ETH layer 2. So I added um, uh, Coty, I put 1% into Coty, and the other one was I went to the deep end section and I added um, ICP and I put 2% of our portfolio into ICP and I did that just before ICP actually exploded. The guys in front runners got the update in the, in the spreadsheet. Um, and I'll show you why, why I did that in a couple of secs, but that's the changes that I made to, uh, to the portfolio. The ICP thing it's just based on how far they've come. And I think that the fact is that there is going to be an ICP season. You can see now that ICP exploded. Um, $19.38. And if you look at our portfolio, that's one of the things that's actually... Um, hold on, let's try and move. Okay, let's just refresh that. Um, yeah, here we go. Uh, okay, so you can see that our ICP trade over here has actually exploded. You can see we're $316,000 up. We're almost 1,000% up on that, I, on that ICP trade. So that's what I did. Um, that's what I did yesterday. And I was kind of stressed to come to yesterday and, and to actually bring you that new portfolio. There was a big pressure for me to, to, to bring you that portfolio. And I want to show you why I had such a huge pressure to make that show yesterday. I mean, we could have made that show at, at any time. And we decided to come to you yesterday and make that show for you. And I want to show you why I think we're running out of time, why there was a time pressure for us to change the portfolio. Because this was a fantastic portfolio. But this portfolio was amazing at that period of the bull market. It was the one that was, um, when it was 25% in Bitcoin based on the ETF trade. It was 15% on Ethereum based on the Ethereum uh, upgrades. It was 12% in Solana. This is not the right portfolio to take you into the next part of the bull market. And the reason for that is because the bull market's going to change and you don't really have time. And I'll show you why you don't have time. So it starts off like this. If you look at this chart over here, what you can see is that Bitcoin broke its all-time high. That's the all-time high, the 69,000. And you can see that that was the, the previous all-time high, which it hit in November 2021. And you can see that here, and let's be a little bit more exact. We won't be exact exact, but we got, we broke and closed the all-time high around the 24th of, uh, around the 10th of March. That is when we broke the all-time high. If you look at the total three, which is the altcoin market cap, we did hit the top of the altcoin market on the 16th of, of November, 2021. But the altcoin market cap is nowhere near hitting its all-time high. Now, that's pretty normal. That, that is pretty normal. But what I want to show you here is that the two cycles have a very, very, very similar structure in terms of how the charts are actually structured. So if you look at 2020, 2017 and you look at 2023, the 2024, the charts are very similar in structure. There's the little breakout, there's the retest, and there's the parabolic move up. There's the breakout, there's the retest, and that's the move up. Now, one thing I showed you was that Bitcoin broke the all-time high, but altcoins are nowhere near breaking the all-time high. This is where the pressure comes in. This is what you need to be looking at. So looking at the previous cycle, Bitcoin broke its all-time high here, and altcoins only broke their all-time high 70 days afterwards. Now, you will remember that I said to you that the first time that Bitcoin broke the all-time high was um, on the 10th of March. We are now on the 26th of March. That was, call it 16 days ago, 15, 14 days ago, 14 days ago. 14 days ago, Bitcoin broke its all-time high. That means that altcoins usually break the all-time high 
70 days after the, the, the break, the Bitcoin breaks its all-time high. Usually what they do is they correct after Bitcoin breaks its all-time high. They correct over here after 22 days and then they go up. We had a correction. We are now 14 days afterwards and now we're starting to go up. It kind of means that if we follow this cycle this in, in, a, in a very similar way, then we should be ready to break the all-time high in about 45 days or so. 45, maybe 50 days. That is when we expect the altcoins or total three to actually break its all-time high over here. Now, for, in order for total three to break its all-time high, let's just see how far we have to go between now and hitting the all-time high. That means that altcoins need to go up by 50%. I mean, you understand how violent a move of 50% in the next 54 days is going to be. It's it's face melting. I mean, you just think like, I just look at you and I just see your face melting. That's basically what happens, right? So why are you laughing? I know you're laughing because of savage. You're laughing at <laughs> a savage, savage. Because the fucking d dens are savage. Uh, you know, I, actually, I loved, I, I loved it. I loved the Twitter account, right? Everyone has the plan till savage punches them in the mouth. And it, like, you can see that like, yeah, I saw this one. He says, another sexy uppercut. <laughs> I, I just, that's why I like this guy. And I think when he beats Jake Paul, Savage is going to go savage, savage, it's going to go savage. Anyway, let's go back to our, our analysis. So this is my pressure. My pressure is the following. We know that for the next 54 days, altcoins are going to push really high if we follow the last cycle, okay? If we follow the last cycle, for the next 54 days, altcoins are going to go absolutely parabolic. There's a 50% potential increase in altcoins in the next 54 days if if this chart is to be true. That's the first part of the analysis. That's the first part why we were in a hurry. The second part of why we were in a hurry stems from the next chart. And the next chart is the is this chart over here. Once the altcoins break the their previous all-time high, in the last cycle, there were only 269 days until the top. 269 days is 7, 4 to 28. So call it 40 weeks. We could be, we could be 40 weeks away from the top of this bull market. If we follow the cycle like we did last time, and I'm only using previous data because that's all I have to work on, we could be 40 weeks between now and the end of the cycle. I know it sounds like quite sad, but the reality is that what it does mean is it means that in the next 40 weeks, you can expect... I'm looking at the wrong chart. What, what, are you trying to eat a sweet or what, what, are you, what are you trying to do there? So what you can see is that we could be in this part of the cycle, there could be 40 weeks to get us to the all-time high. It is why you cannot afford to be sidelined. This is the reason why you cannot afford to be sidelined. And I said this to you guys many, many shows ago. I said, you cannot afford to be sidelined. Someone said, filled less than 10% of our panic market bids um, Coinbase stock yearly high and Bitcoin bouncing off support. Markets have been unforgiving for people who are sitting on the sidelines. This is, you, unfortunately, you missed the early part of the bull run and you're now here and now you've got to deal with what's actually been thrown at you. And what's been thrown at you is that we're going up. As I said to you before, the corrections are getting way shorter. It means that everything is now compressed and that if we follow the last part of the cycle, we have 269 days from when, we, when altcoins hit the all-time high till we get to the top or 345 days from when Bitcoin hits the all-time high till we get to the cycle top. This is it. This is like you've, you've run a marathon. You've survived the, the, the marathon. You're in the last five kilometers. For Americans, five kilometers is about three miles. I, I know, I know. I know. You get the story with Americans, right? You know how Americans operate. We will not use the metric system, but they pull out a nine mil, a nine mil gun. Come on. So, so... Even for the Americans, you also, you, you, metric or not metric system, you guys have for 345 days to the top of the cycle. That's less than a year to the top of the cycle. This is a very unforgiving part of the cycle. It's a face melting part of the cycle. I can show you multiple charts that show exactly the same thing. We had the retest on the, the support resistance retest, and now we're starting to move up. So that is what I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to show you guys why we are running out of time. And then very, very, very quickly, because I don't want to spend too much time here, but a lot of people came to me yesterday and said, you know, we loved your portfolio, 
people here in the office said to me, look, we loved your portfolio. Uh, the only issue is that you didn't add in a lot of base tokens. You didn't add in tokens like Aerodrome and Velodrome. And they were like, why didn't you add in all the base tokens? And I just want to show you what my thinking is here. Because I did think about it. I was going to put in a lot more of the Aerodromes and stuff like that. But I didn't do it. And the reason why I didn't do it is very simple. I want to show you this spreadsheet over here. Um, in the spreadsheet, what you can see is these are the base ecosystem tokens. And you can see what I did was to show you why I didn't go crazy on them. I said, look, let's look at their full, fully diluted valuations and their 30-day returns. So if you would have been, and we called base narrative three weeks ago. Many influencers followed us and started calling the base narrative afterwards. And now when I look at Aerodrome and I look at all the, 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 the base tokens, and you can, this spreadsheet will be at the bottom of the show. It's already in front runners. Um, you can see that if I look at Aerodrome, Aerodrome has a 1.198 million, $1.2 billion fully diluted valuation. It's up 15x already in the last 30 days. Now, wouldn't it be a little bit irresponsible of me to put you into a token that is at a $1.2 billion fully diluted valuation and that has already done a 15x? That's why I didn't put it into the portfolio. Now, I wanted to show you like, look, look at the biggest meme coin on, on um, I mean, I don't know if you can call uh, DJ and base a meme coin, but you can definitely call Brett a, a base Brett a meme coin. Half a billion dollar fully diluted valuation. Very, very, very hard for me to put the community into that, that kind of meme coin, even though I am a holder, but I, my holder is, 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 is from, my holding is from before. Wouldn't it be smarter to go into an ecosystem which hasn't run as much, but also shows potential? So as, as an example, let's look at the near ecosystem, right? Near is another one of those rotations that I think are going to be bullish. If you're bullish on AI, you have to be bullish on Near. And the reason why you have to be bullish on Near is because Ilya, who's the founder of, of, of Near, is a full AI degen. In fact, he was in AI before he was into crypto. He was on a, on a panel with Jensen Huang. We know that Near is starting to get a lot of momentum and specifically a lot of momentum around AI. I even saw a quote in this article over here, which I don't expect you guys to read, uh, I saw a quote which says, Ilya's insight was also highlighted, also highlighted Nia's commitment to leveraging Web3 technologies for the broader adoption and innovation across a range of future tech uses. Uh, Jensen himself noted that he thinks that Nia is very cool. So we know now that Nia has this, it's a brilliant blockchain with brilliant technology, with brilliant adoption, and it... One of the most important things for me about Neom is that it is a blockchain from the previous cycle. Now, remember I said to you, the difference between Solana and Base is that a lot of the tooling and a lot of the applications have already been built on Solana. And on Base, there's not that many opportunities because they're all brand new. Near is one of those that does have a big ecosystem. I mean, I'll show you some of the ecosystem. And again, you'll get the spreadsheet after the show. The front runners got a little bit before the show. Uh, that's one of the commitments that we make to the front runners. Um, so... Let me just show you show this to you here. So you can see the biggest DEX, which is called Ref Finance, has a fully diluted valuation of $44 million. This DEX has a fully diluted valuation of $1.2 billion. Now, which one would you rather that I put you into? The one that has a $44 million fully diluted valuation or the one that has a $1.2 billion fully diluted valuation? I'll give you another example. Meme coins. The, the meme coin called Black Dragon, which is... You can, you can kind of say that's Elias. You know, he calls himself the Black Dragon. Uh, let me see if I can find you a picture of the meme coin. Um, hold on. Uh, can we find the Black Dragon? Okay, you, you can go look for it. It's, it's called the Black Dragon. Has a fully diluted valuation of $8 million. The, full, the, the fully diluted valuation on the, the base ecosystem, $500 million. Now, if you were me, wh where would you rather lead your community? into an ecosystem that we called three weeks ago and that has run a lot and is at, I won't say fully priced valuations, but very high priced valuations? Or would you rather go into the up and coming one, which is playing the AI narrative, um, reasonable valuations, one cycle old already. In other words, Nia has been around actually for one and a half cycles um, and slightly more value, slightly earlier or would you rather go into base? Now, look, you probably, if you invest in Aerodrome today, there's probably, there's probably a, another 1x there. Like, you could, could, could get to a 2.5 billion fully diluted valuation. No doubt about that. If you invest in Brett today, maybe it'll get to a billion dollar valuation. But, uh, it's possible. But 
if near does take off and you get to a billion dollar valuation, there's the 25X here. So look, I've put a whole lot of bets on near. I mean, you can see here that I've got, I've got some money on near. Um, where is our near position? There is a near position. It's here. It's, uh, there's a 40,000 near position here. I've started trading the BitGate account now. So I, I took a position on Phantom. I put $25,000 on Phantom and I put $46,000 on Sui. I think I'm going to add near uh, to the BitGate account. Um, 779, I think I will take a bit of a position there. I think I'll take, I'll start nibbling. I'm not, I'm not going all in on the BitGate account. I'm just nibbling. I'm just, as you can see, I'm just nibbling. Uh, let's just, actually want to get this. So I'm actually going to go here. Um, because the market's heated, I'm not, I'm not going all in now. I'm just, as you can see, I'm just dipping my feet in the water here. Um, there we go. I'm confirming 5,000 near bang. There we go. I've opened. Jeepers. Okay. Now that we all lost our ears and we all lost our hearing. Um, okay. Thanks, but get for making us losing, lose our hearing. I can't hear in my speaker. Is it, am I, am I still on? You can't hear. Oof. Wow. Okay. Okay. So that is that is um, why I why I didn't go crazy on the thing. I'm very bullish on the AI ecosystem. You know, I'm very bullish on the AI ecosystem. If you are bullish on the AI ecosystem and you're bullish on layer ones and it's a very strong layer one, you know, one of the ways to get in is is near, um, and you can buy the, the meme coins. Uh, one of our sponsors also in the AI sector, Humans.ai. So this is a very 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 serious project in the AI sector. Um, market cap, $319 million. They launched, they have a partnership with NVIDIA, first of all. So let's start off that they actually did a partnership with NVIDIA. Second thing is they launched a, um, a an AI advisor to the Romanian Maybe I government. Maybe something worth boasting about. This technology is the first of its kind in the world. They got a, in, in the Romanian government, they built an AI agent. So I'm not going to show, I'm not going to play the whole video also because I might get a copyright strike here. Um, they are also doing airdrops and they've given, or they're going to announce that they're giving us mon uh, money for the banter bags with one of their projects. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what's the name of the project? It's called? You. 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 Announce you, yeah. So let me just show you this. Uh, okay. I don't, I don't have the, there we it's go. Announced. There we go. They're going to do, they're going to do a, uh, yeah, we'll get you much more info on this one soon. So that is that. Um, lastly today, before we go, just, uh, I need, I need a favor from you. I took a bet with the founders of Evo that our community is the most degen community in the world and that we can easily, easily, easily do $100 million of, of, revenue, of, of trading volume in Evo. I took a, it, was a, it, it was a bet that I took with the founders of Evo. Evo, for those of you that don't know, is a decentralized exchange. It's a perpetuals exchange. You can trade perpetuals. Um, you can trade perpetuals in a decentralized way. In other words, you're not actually putting money onto the exchange. Um, it looks and feels like a centralized exchange and, and it's as fast as a centralized exchange. Now, I took a bet with a founder that in four months, we can get a, to $100 million of turnover. Now, here's where we're at. I want, I'm gonna be very transparent with you guys and I'm gonna show you exactly where we're at if I can find the dashboard. So far, so far, we have done, as a community, $12,860,000 uh, in turnover. What I need from you, I need you guys to sign up and I need you guys to trade like mofos and I need you guys to show them that we are the most powerful community in the world and that we can get this number to 100 million in, uh, in the next four months. I'm counting on you guys, okay? I'm here every single day, bring you crypto love and crypto wisdom. This time I need something back. Go do it, sign up. There's a link below over here. If, if you don't sign up with a, with a link, it doesn't actually count. Remember, you can sign up from wherever you are in the world because there's no KYC and because it's decentralized. I do recommend though using a VPN um, just so that no one knows what your addresses are. Guys, I will see you guys again tomorrow. Remember, if you want to change someone's life, we want to change people's lives. We want to change all. We want to change everyone's lives. Uh, just sign. Just go and fill this in for us. Uh, we will review the thing. We may even get hold of you to ask you a whole lot more questions. Otherwise, have a smashing day and trade well, my friends. <laughs>